Hello again YouTube and I'm back with an update to my microgrid uh, test and when I say microgrid in, in my AC coupled uh, configuration here uh, my setup is you know my micro inverters uh, my grid tie micro inverters are talking to this Magnusign battery based inverter and in an AC coupled configuration and I have been running this thing since early this morning in that configuration. Well, essentially my inverter has been inverting. I have been off the grid. All of my 120 volt circuits, all of them, have been off the grid. And I've been, you know, you know, distilling water and stuff like that. And it took some, some power out of the battery bank. And right now, it's still uh, disconnected from the utility and it's right now it's since that uh, process my distil distillation process has ended um, you know I've taken out you know uh, roughly 15 uh, percent uh, depth of discharge I'll take you know 15 amp hour from the battery and uh, uh, not 15 amp hour I'm sorry uh, a 15 percent depth of discharge to a state of charge of 85 percent and my battery bank is 25.9 volts in climbing. And so this is, what ha this is what happens in an AC couple scenario. As you can see, uh, you know, the amps are coming into my battery bank now. It's at, you know, 12.9 amps. And, you know, I'm only pulling about 696 watts uh, from my solar. Um, solar noon, it's just after solar noon. And this kind of, again, I just want to illustrate how efficient those microinverters actually are. And, uh, and if you look, again, you know, I'm still pulling a steady 12.8 amps. Now, for some people, well, that's not a lot. Well, actually, that's quite a, quite a bit. That's, that's very good, as a matter of fact, um, you know, when you consider, you know, uh, you know the time of year. Um, and also, you can see that my voltage is climbing. Um, if you look at my other video, you'll see that my battery voltage was down at like 25%. At once, a couple of times, it was like 24 point something, I suppose. And I am still inverting. So I'm still supplying power uh, to my 120 volt loads. And, you know, what am I supplying to? Well, you know, uh, essentially computer equipment. You know, to the laptop. I'm talking in you know a high-speed laptop. You know, uh, not one of the a small one. It, it, this one takes a lot of power. Um, and you know, a monitor, uh, switch, routers. You know, you name it. I'm, I'm, you know, anything that you have in an office. I'm, uh, you know, I'm running them. I'll, you know, obviously, I'm running the lights as well. But uh, key thing is, I'm running LED lights, so that's really not that much. Um, again, let's see, I'm pulling about 600, just over 687 watts uh, into uh, the house. And, you know, I'm already at 26.1 volts and climbing. Again, this is what happens in an AC couple system. When you don't have enough loads to, you know, satisfy what's coming in. And also, um, it also shows you what this, this idea of a microgrid. You can Google microgrid and give you a better explanation but essentially you know my 240 volt circuits are you know still connected to the utility you know things like the water heater the HVAC the stove and the you know the uh, dryer those things are still connected to the utility and but my all of my 120 volt circuits are connected you know, through my Magnusign here uh, to my inverter uh, through my transfer switch um, that I showed in my in my previous videos as well. So, and uh, right now I am feeling very good. Uh, the idea uh, behind this test uh, was to determine whether or not uh, what it would be like to you know be disconnected from the grid with just just over you know one kilowatt of solar panels. Um, you know, in, on pole mounts and, and on, the, on my roof, what it would be like and how would it affect my batteries? Uh, because, it, you know, I said my, as I said in my other video, I have plans and, uh, for upgrading the system. And right now, from what I am seeing, uh, based on how I have, you know, my house set up with LEDs, you know, my HVAC that's on a programmable thermostat, my uh, water heater that's on a timer, 
so essentially during the day, um, you know, I looked at my TED unit. During the day, uh, my house with a with a on a good solar day, uh, my house uses between the hours of I'd say nine in the morning and three in the afternoon. That is what's considered the solar window between nine a.m. and three p.m. My house uses absolutely no electricity uh, from the utility. Um, so, you know, and my plan is to put, to add an additional two kilowatts of solar on the roof. Now, my roof is f dead south facing. Um, I have absolutely no trees blocking it whatsoever. You know, uh, my house sits on a, uh, like, uh, on an embankment or a hill or that's higher than the other house. So there's absolutely nothing blocking my, the southern exposure of my roof. I mean, it's, it's just absolutely perfect. Um, and I have my solar panels, and uh, I'm going to put them there. They're energies. Uh, hold on one second. Let me pause, and I'm going to show you my panels. Okay, YouTube, I'm back here. These are the panels that I'm going to put on the roof. Uh, they are Renergy panels. Um, you can see here, they're 250 watts a piece, and I have eight of them. They have black anodized aluminum frames, and they are, they are monocrystalline cells. Um, they were, Renergy was having a, a great special, and I decided to get eight of them. So that's about two kilowatts. And also, kind of give you an idea, I'm going to use the snap and rack uh, rail racking system uh, to uh, put them on my roof. And uh, the snap and rack I found, you know, after doing research, and I, I like the technology that they're using, and uh, you know, to make it really simple. Hopefully, it'll be simple. Uh, but that's my plan. I've I've already got the racks. I've got the um, the, the the panels as well, and also. I have here, um, this is uh, my, a box from APS, and I have four more grid tie inverters. And so each grid tie, each, each grid tie, APS grid tie inverter can take two panels. So all I needed was four. So I'll have seven total. And I have the other racking components down there and my other racking components right here. So I have all of the equipment. And so I'm, uh, I had to go to the uh, uh, inspection, county inspector, and I had to get a build a permit, so I've got the permit, and I'm also working with my utility company to see, you know, to try and get uh, to legally get connected to the grid. Um, so, you know, there's forms to fill out, diagrams to submit, and stuff like that, and I've submitted them. Uh, one of the other things that I had to do in order to comply uh, with their standards, I literally had to take a uh, an online course for NABCEP entry level examination. Uh, NABCEP is the national, uh, the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. And so I took the, you know, I had to take like an exam. You know, you take the online course and then you have to take an exam through them just so that you can qualify to take another exam, okay, for the NABCEP uh, entry level. And I've done that already. And, um, you know, I had to read some books and, you know, some, some additional things like that. So I got my own copy, my own copy of the uh, 2014 NEC. Um, I have some other additional uh, books as well that truly prepare you for, you know, NAPSEP, NAPSEP examination and to teach you a lot about solar. Not what you get on YouTube from looking at guys like us, you know, do-it-yourselfers, but actual you know additional information to where you know when if you read this stuff um i can guarantee you that you yourself can be you know you can start your own business the books that i have can do them and in another video i i'm going to share that you know what i used um all of this you know these these little things like there's a guy you know implix.com uh, that talks about you know hey you know read his book and he'll teach you this that and the other that's crap um, you know, yeah, they, they're good books. They're good informational things that tell you, yeah, you hook this up and you hook that up and, oh, you know, what do you know? You got power. But no, these books or these references that I have that I had to use were actual references that, I mean, they talk about things like insulation, azimuth, angles, and, you know, shading, why you have, you know, I didn't know that a panel 
solar panel needed, you know, um, you know, bypass diodes, and, and there's a difference between bypass diodes and blocking diodes. There's a reason why you don't put flooded lead acid batteries underneath your equipment. Um, a lot of folks don't know this. Um, you know, there's a reason for it. Um, there's a reason why you use a certain, you know, type of battery wire, you know, cables. You know, um, I have cables and I have, you know, um, you know, uh, circuit breakers that will keep those, those, those battery cables safe. But, you know, um, you know, that's, you know, it's, it's not correct. And I, I plan to correct that soon. So again, there's a lot of things I had to prepare for. And, and the idea was for me to get connected to the grid so that, I can take the excess energy that I produce, put it on the grid, and also I plan to have uh, some additional batteries, some real batteries that will actually allow me to use that power during the night. So I'll push power to the grid during the day and use the batteries at night. And my goal is to essentially bring my electric usage uh, from the utility down to zero. Um, I have a plan. So I will have three kilowatts, uh, just over three kilowatts of power uh, that I'm going to have on, you know, as far as my solar setup. In addition to this, in an AC couple scenario, uh, with all of my 120 circuits on a, uh, you know, on a separate uh, loads or uh, critical load panel, I think I have, I'm going to have an awesome, outstanding system. But anyway, that's in the future. Lord willing, I'll be able to, you know, put it together. Um, and I'll do a video, you know, just to kind of uh, just an update and uh, I'll keep you guys in the loop. All right, you two take care